right, just a quick video. As you guys know, all of these uh, PCB boards have the XT60 connector, right? Which uh, sometimes it gets in the way. Like for example, here, you can't really connect it. So it's only good for like the ends, the very last one, uh, either at the bottom or in the front, or if you end up doing a double-sided uh, board sort of like this one where you have a lot of spacing between each board or double the space right um, then you can connect it there but a lot of people are asking if these can ever be made so that you can slide them in and hot swappable and the answer is yes they can be by using these XT60s that are 90s right so i order some and they're not readily available here it took forever it took weeks for me to get these but they're finally here and of course they're different they don't have the same size of the legs let me get one go here is the xt60 so those holes right there are made for these right and so they're small but and then they also have these little their little pins right here but the, you can do it on the old boards um, and they do go on top. Look at that, right? So I'm going to attempt to uh, solder that right now. And then uh, just to show you guys that you can do it. This is a V1 board, but it would be the same as a V2. And of course, I do I have instructed Justin to see if we can redesign that so that we can also do backwards compatibility with these and those. Um, I don't know how we're gonna do that. Maybe we'll have to leave the holes that size and then just create, you know, move them back and then create the little holes for those so that this one, I think this one needs that for, you know, structural stability. Uh, and then at the back, you'll just, we'll just have to use a lot of solder to fill those up. How much solder? I don't know, let me, let me test it out here. All right, here we go. There is the thing. Let's check it out if we can solder this. There we go. That one's better. There we go. Now we have an, a 90. It's pretty strong. I don't think... You know, it, it'll be better if it had the, uh, you know, the proper holes, which we will have on the, on the future version of the board. But for right now, this works. You could totally do that. All right. Next on the list is how do we use these connectors, the IDC connectors, right? These are the ones that we have, or at least I have decided to switch over to do this, right? so that you can use a ribbon cable and you know you can do this thing they are just way higher quality these connectors work a lot better the only drawback is of course that i think a lot of people will will have trouble installing them right because these are have some blades that cut into the actual cable and that's how they get connected but i guess we'll make a video on how to do that if you don't have the proper tools i I just use like regular pliers to do this where like I just apply pressure kind of evenly and then did a couple times. I don't know if I did it successfully in all of these. I will have to test them, but we'll do that on, in the next video. Um, for now, I want to show you how you will install them here because obviously this board was not designed for that. It's got a single line of pins where it really requires a double line of pins right because the the design that we're going is to have two of these pins be the same the same trace so that you have two of these cables right it'll be like the the uh so it'll basically be the uh the brown and the red will be the same pin so that way you'll have if you miss one of them when you're like connecting them or whatever um then you have redundancy you have two of these cables running carrying the, the same lead uh and also not only redundancy if, if uh, to 
account for bad connections or possible bad or weak connections. Also, it will allow us to, to run double the power, right? Output through these little cables, because these are small. I don't remember what gauge they are. Something like 26 or something, 23 or 26 gauge. So they're, they're small, but of course these are sensing cables most, mostly, right? So they're not gonna see a lot of power. They're mostly gonna see just sense. Um, at first, when you first, you know, assemble a pack like that, if they're a little bit slightly off, then there will be some energy transfer from them. So if your packs are like really off, like this one is like, you know, 10% state of charge and this one's 90% state of charge, then there might be a lot of energy transfer from here to there using those little cables. So um, you have to, we're gonna have to keep that in mind when you're assembling your packs. So you don't exceed the amount that these little cables can uh, support. And of course we'll, we'll do some tests. We'll find out how much that is. But for right now, let me show you how you will install them on your old PCBs, right? Like the ones that, uh, yeah, because we don't have them yet, you know, updated for the design. So, all right, so what I have decided to do is, of course, we're gonna have to cut the pins. Some of these pins, because, you know, 16 pins, we only have eight of them. So what I have did on this one right here, what I did is I cut the back ones, the top ones or back ones, whatever you want to call them, these guys. And then I use those. Uh, and so that, we're, let's do that right now. So here we go. Usually what I do is I bend it over like this and just cut them like that. Look at that. Okay. Oops, I was moving around. I'm using my bracket over there to do another test, so I don't have that. So then what you do now that you have those like that, you will just, uh, yeah, install it sort of like that. They poke right through the other side. You just solder them. Let's solder these guys. Remember, you gotta use like a small tip. It helps you when you're using a small tip there. Boom, look at that. This little cone, that's what you wanna do, I think. I'm not an expert on soldering. I'm probably not even good at soldering. But, I know there's a lot of you guys out there that need practice soldering. <laughs> yes, I've seen some of your guys' projects and they're, frankly, they're scary. Uh, so, yeah, soldering is one of those things that most people think it doesn't require any skill, but that is not true. There is quite a bit of skill involved in soldering. It's not hard, but I think a lot of people just don't ever master it, right? And so we need to change that. That's why my ultimate uh, goal would be to like offer these already soldered like these, you know, like with those in there, with the holders in there, and then, you know, you just basically connect them. Look at that. I like this. This is kind of flat. I like this. This is, this is a, uh, you can do that now with the boards today that, that we're doing, right? With these boards. This is, this is version one. This is version two. Um, the version two, I like them because they stick past the, uh, the, uh, the holders here. So if we ever want to actually do a sliding Thing, a hot swappable thing uh, they're gonna work it's gonna be harder on these v1s because they don't have anything to go so how are we gonna slide them how, what's gonna hold them if you're not if you're missing these right so there's there's a lot of benefits to these and the size of the holes are also smaller so it allows you to use these cheaper uh, things so there you go that's how you do the new connectors well I will be uploading tests you know, showing you the, the benefits of these, right? Comparing them to the old ones, you know, doing tests like to see performance. And hopefully uh, we're gonna see more than just like mechanical, right? Mechanically, I like them better, they, they work, uh, but also electrically, I wanna show that they're, they're gonna be better. So we'll do that in a future video. All right, quick video, thank you for watching. Uh, join our Facebook group, this is where you can find how to, where to get all these parts. This is still kind of in beta. I haven't finished doing all my testing. I haven't finished doing all the video. 
rest assured when I release this thing fully, it's gonna have full instructions. I'm gonna show you all the tests, right? Uh, to back up my claims as to what kind of power outputs these will do. I uh, And then my plan is to actually show you building a full, you know, full size, like five kilowatt hour, something like that, uh, power wall, which is over there, right? It's halfway made, now I just gotta make a bunch of connectors. I gotta figure out how to like do some mechanical connect, you know, like structural things to, to that the batteries are safe and they're like attached in there, you know, that's, I'm working on all that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Join the Facebook group, like I said, and subscribe to this channel if you're not, because those videos are going to be published here. And that's it. See you guys on the next video. Bye. 15 seconds. 10, 9, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Lift off. Just clear the tower.
left hand side of your screen, and on the right is the second stage of the rocket as it continues to ascend towards low Earth orbit. There it is, that's the start of the entry burn of that Falcon 9 first stage. This burn is only about 30 seconds. Uh, right now, that uh, first stage is mostly empty of fuel, so it's actually pretty light. It doesn't need that much force to slow it down. Stage one entry burn is shut down. And that looks like the shutdown of the entry burn. You're getting views both from the top of the Falcon 9 first stage uh, as it comes down through the air, and also from the ground, uh, visible from California.